One of the critical pieces of evidence in this case is the 911 call that Johansson placed on April 7th, 2018, when he claimed to have discovered his wife's dead body next to their bed. Listen closely, we're gonna play the whole thing for you. It's, it's quite lengthy, but when you're done listening to it, you'll understand well, why after this 911 call was made, investigators were suspicious. Imagine living in a world where the person you trust the most becomes the source of your deepest fear. Picture a reality where the walls of your home, instead of offering sanctuary, echo with threats and looming danger. In this episode, we delve deep into the life of Brandy Salenza, a vibrant soul whose life took a harrowing turn within the confines of her own home. Nestled in the picturesque Palm Coast, her story unfolds, revealing the grim facade of domestic tranquility. Join us recount this twisted tale of love, betrayal, and a quest for justice that shook a community to its core. Brandy Salenza was the definition of a glowing personality, a beacon of light in the lives of those who knew her. Born and raised in Palm Coast, Florida, she grew up with the warmth of the sun and care of both parents, Candy and John Salenza. Brandy was your typical American girl, was pretty, into sports, and a bona fide Girl Scout. She was known for her adventurous spirit and loved to be with her family. As she blossomed into adulthood, Brandy's passions guided her path. In 2012, Brandy became a mother to a bright, adorable boy named Ryland, who quickly became the center of her universe. Now did Brandy get caught up with the same problems and vices many people find themselves ensnared by? For sure, but she never let this affect the life of her son. All her dreams and aspirations were suddenly directed to the welfare and nourishment of Ryland. Brandy's life took a turn when she crossed paths with a man named Keith Johansson, who was at the time 36 years old. Their casual meetings evolved into an exclusive bond, leading to a romantic relationship, which quickly deepened in a span of a year. The decision to get married felt like a natural progression. Then, a year into their marriage, tensions began to surface in Brandy and Keith's seemingly idyllic life, casting shadows over their domestic bliss. For starters, the couple had problems. They weren't perfect. Keith's protective nature, once a source of comfort for Brandy, began to feel like a constriction that seeped into their life. Their home even had surveillance cameras all over, a pivotal detail that would eventually lead to Keith's downfall. He would later forget that every interaction was captured and that the system had cloud backup, making everything retrievable. Security footage inside their home would reveal that they often shared an addiction to methamphetamine. However, records show Keith was deeper into the drug problem, and it slowly but surely manifested in their bond. The cracks in their marriage became more evident as financial worries added another layer of tension. More footage from their bedroom camera revealed controlling, possessive, and to some extent, violent behavior from Keith, and this happened far too frequently to be normal. He would berate her with insults and allegations, and the nonverbal communication was rather obvious too showing threats to hurt her in more ways than one. In one of the videos, Keith even threatened to put Brandy in a mental health institution, something that was notoriously easy to do in Florida. In another footage, the man would put a pistol beside her and ask her to kill herself. She just laid there absorbing the abuse and Keith finally blurted something to the effect of, I'll kill you even if I have to go to jail. He then went on to accuse Brandy of infidelity among other things, all while threatening to pull the trigger to her face. This marked a critical turning point, setting the stage for the events that would soon unfold. The climax of the tragic story took place on a seemingly ordinary April morning of 2018 in the Johansson household. Brandy, immersed in her daily routine, was unaware of the looming catastrophe. Earlier that day, she spoke to her sister Amber about taking both their kids to the fair. The home footage that day was tragic as it was heartfelt. Brandy was seen talking to Ryland, asking him how excited he was to go out and have fun. A few moments later, the son emerged from the bathroom and said, I love you, Mom. None of them knew the tragedy that was about to unravel. Brandy then walks into her bedroom to prepare for their date, but sadly, she never comes out. At this point, Keith's inner turmoil had reached a boiling point. The critical moment came without warning. In a devastating turn of events, Keith, overwhelmed by a storm of emotions, committed the irreversible act of shooting Brandy. You will hear testimony from responding deputies that while they noticed some water on the floor 
on one side of the bedroom, sort of towards the bathroom. There was no water on the floor by the victim. Mr. Johansson wasn't wet. His hair wasn't wet. And the bathroom and the shower didn't look like a shower had just happened and someone rushed out in a hurry to assist. The sound of gunfire shattered the morning calm, marking a tragic endpoint to their relationship. Brandy was struck twice, a chilling testament to the violence of the moment. The immediate aftermath was a blur of panic and confusion, with Keith's subsequent actions adding layers of complexity to the unfolding drama. As the reality of what happened sunk in, Keith's initial response was to weave a web of deceit. He placed a frantic call to emergency services, fabricating a story that veered far from the truth. One of the critical pieces of evidence in this case is the 911 call that Johansson placed on April 7th, 2018, when he claimed to have discovered his wife's dead body next to their bed. Listen closely, we're gonna play the whole thing for you. It's, it's quite lengthy, but when you're done listening to it, you'll understand while, why after this 911 call was made, investigators were suspicious. County 911, where's your manager? Yes, may I have an officer over at 23 Helter Lane? 23 what? Helter Lane. F E L T E R? Yes. Okay, what's going on there? Um, I was in the shower. I heard gunshots. I think my wife shot herself. What happened? I was in the shower. And I heard some gunshots. Okay. I think that my wife accidentally shot herself. Do you see her? Yes. Uh, is she, where did she shoot herself? Looks like in my bedroom. Where did she shoot herself bodily? I don't know, I can't see it. What do you actually see? She's laying down right next to the bed. Unfortunately for Keith, the surveillance footage was still rolling, capturing even the call to 911, which clearly showed he was never in the shower. He was actually seen frantically running around the house, most likely covering his tracks. As the case progressed, it became evident that Keith's initial claims were crumbling under the weight of scrutiny. The prosecution argued that Brandy was not handling the firearm, that Keith was the sole aggressor, and that this was a brutal act of intentional violence. The trial that took place three years after in 2021 became a battleground of conflicting narratives. Witnesses close to Brandy painted a heartbreaking picture of a woman yearning to break free from the cycle of abuse that had defined her marriage. Keith's defense team, however, suddenly changed their story. They quickly and desperately clung to the portrayal of a distraught and overwhelmed man driven to a desperate act in the heat of self-defense. As if grasping on straws, Keith even implied at one point that Ryland, the six-year-old child might have been responsible for the act. This, of course, held no water in court and was immediately discarded. Then the defense eventually leaned in and used the oldest trick in the book, psychological incapacity. Keith finally admitted he shot her, but he claims to be insane and that it was self-defense. After a tense and emotionally charged trial that lasted over a week, the jury ultimately reached a verdict that resonated with a community shaken. Keith Johansson, at this point 39 years of age, was found guilty of first-degree offense, a declaration of justice for the life that was needlessly taken. He received a life sentence without the possibility of parole, ensuring that he would face the consequences of his actions for the remainder of his days. This came as a relief to the family and the community at large, because finally, justice was served. A mother is slain by her husband and her six-year-old child is left to suffer the consequences State Attorney R.J. Laritza said in a news release, Life in prison gives little consolation for such a callous and brutal act. The aftermath of this tragedy extends beyond the confines of a courtroom verdict. Brandy's absence left an unfillable void in the lives of those who loved her, a constant reminder of the senselessness of the events that transpired. Her family and friends continue to grapple with their loss, finding solace in keeping her memory alive and channeling their grief into advocating for other victims of domestic violence. The story of Brandy Colenza sparked discussions about the importance of recognizing the red flags, of empowering victims, and dismantling the toxic societal forces that perpetuate cycles of abuse. Because at the end of the day, behind closed doors and bright smiles, someone might be suffering in silence.
Thank you for watching. Drop your thoughts on this chilling story in the comments below. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more daily true crime stories.